Okay, I'm just walking up to the unit now. I've never been more excited, but also nervous about a project. With the E30 basically, you know, pretty much done now, nearly done. We needed to do something else. And Ronnie had an idea. I didn't know if I was that keen on the idea, but nonetheless, it's in the unit. So clearly I lost out on this, uh, this debate. How bad is it? It's better than I thought. Better than you thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you done much? Have you seen much of it? I'm a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had a look round. You've had a quick look round. Outside, took some bits off already. <laughs> right. yeah. No one can see right now because the lighting's behind me. Oh, okay. Cut to the cinematic. Okay, so it's an Aston Martin. Um, still kind of shit in my pants, but. So it's a DB11 in turbo V8 out of the C. C63? E63. E63. Yeah, E63. Yeah. I think the um, same engine. Got some tuning uh, capabilities there as well. Basically, I can't afford this thing, right? And Ron found it, and Ron was like, look, this would be pretty fun. We can film it, we can go ass. And then we was like, well, what are we going to do after? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> so you like the Copart game as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, my caddy's a Copart. This is it. the biggest one you've done so far, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 this is by far the biggest thing I've, yes. I've ever, yeah. ever done. Um, and I am a little bit worried. You, I, I did say don't look over it. Have you looked over it a bit? Uh, of course I have. I mean, I can already see something dangling down there on the suspension, which, how much are the parts going to be for this? <laughs> Oh, so, so, oh, it's a hub. Yeah. Well, it was a hub. First of all, what, what, have you just dragged it in? You've not tried to start it or anything? Uh, no, 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 they've pushed right. it in. Push it into that right, so we've, put, right, we've pushed it in. I mean, what we've got to do first is we've got to do the obligatory try and start it, right? Mate, if this thing starts... Oh, the airbags have gone off. Great. Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't show you that. So the airbags have gone off. This <laughs> one's gone off as well. Oh, yeah, that's the no. biggest worry. Of the apex. Okay, no, well, at no, least it pulls on. So, steering wheel, yeah. knee airbag. There's a knee, um, there, there's a knee airbag. Knee airbag, yeah. Posh things, posh things. Right, I'm going to try and start it. Oh. If this starts, I'm going to be very thankful that we've spent this much money on it. If it doesn't start, I'm going to start shit my pants, Ronnie, I'm not going to lie. Ow! <laughs> Jesus, this is like, this is tiny in here. Who was sitting in it? Well, no, there's loads of room. It doesn't look it. It looks like a f***ing X5 in here. Yeah? What's this? <laughs> Are we keeping that? Yeah. Oh, we're going to keep everything, let's be honest. I don't do nice cars. How do I start this? <laughs> middle. Let's see that button in the middle. Right, okay. <sighs> let's try and stay positive. Should we put a battery jumper on it? Yeah, Checking the battery's just dead. Oh! Right, let's, let's send it. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Right, oh my God, is this going to start? Oh my God. Did you fall on the brake? It's just, oh, starting. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Right. How much was this? Funny, I'm getting a little bit worried. Right, pyro fuse, that makes sense. That does actually make sense. Pyro fuse. So pyro fuse is basically a safety function. When the car's in a crash, it cuts this pyro fuse and it cuts all power going to the engine. So we found the pyro fuse, we bridged it, and let's pray if it's gonna start. Ready? Yeah. On the brake. Yeah. Oh. It's not happy, is it? No. Okay. Right, what we're saying, mate, what's what's yeah, that battery is dead. As soon as you take anything to boost the pack off, it just goes to nothing. Right. So I think the first port of call is we'll get a battery for it. Yeah. Um, have yeah. we got one or should we have to just get one tomorrow? The battery is right. like 
that. Oh Jesus. It's huge. Right, well let's see, should we just see what's, what's wrong with it? Yeah, we'll let's, start taking, let's start taking some things apart and see what's wrong with it. Now the biggest worry when you're buying a car like this is if you can see any structural damage. Now this is a cat end, but sometimes the insurers do get it wrong. So we shouldn't have any structural damage. Anything that's damaged should be removed and it shouldn't be affecting the actual chassis of the vehicle. So right now we're just checking if that's the case and if there is any hidden evils, which right now I think we're all right. Yeah, I did notice this. This, yeah. this doesn't look too happy. So, no, but okay, yeah. right. So, oh, so the bonnet, so it hinges forward. Yeah, the bonnet hinges forwards. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, bonnet hinges headlights. Oh no, they're not going to be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I've also seen the windscreen's cracked. That's not going to be cheap. So I don't know, it's done a little bit of paint there, okay. like a tiny bit, but then I don't know if this is PPE, because if I've got, not, I've got gloves on there, but you feel it, it feels, like a bit rubbery. Wing here, this is all fine. Yeah. Door, look, if you look at the lines, yeah. It all looks fine. The bonnet's gone back, and that's what's done the screen there, and obviously the airbag's done that screen. Right. So realistically, it might just be crash bar, rad pack, rad pack. hub, and bonnet, bumper, headlights. I, I don't know if there's an auxiliary cooler or something here. So the first thing to do is to start removing everything to see exactly what is damaged. So we're going to remove the front crash bar, which is held on by four bolts on either side. Bent. Then we can remove the two air boxes. Now there's a huge puddle of coolant on the floor wherever we left the car, so we know that the radiator has been punctured. So we need to start removing the whole rad pack. Luckily there's no air con in there, eh? That's never fun getting them out. <laughs> Apparently it's illegal to let them off. Has anyone actually not let them off and actually got the proper person? <laughs> Speaking as a, a workshop owner, yes. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this might be a gearbox. Cool, oil cooler? No, oh. it's coolant. Oh, right, okay. Uh, There's a lot going on here. So that's another auxiliary. There's another one here. Why is the food? An auxiliary cooler. What does that, what does that cool? The auxiliaries. <laughs> auxiliary stuff. What does this mean? Gearbox is at the back. The gearbox at the be... back of the car? Yeah. I know absolutely nothing about Aston Martins, honestly, yeah, I know absolutely nothing. So we spent about the next 10 minutes arguing about what was what, and we came to the conclusion that we still don't really know, and we don't really care. Let's just remove it all. Oh God, this is, feels so wrong doing things this expensive. Yeah, I know. Oh. I've, seen, I've seen your previous work. <laughs> Why did you want to go after me then? <laughs> what did you just say? I said there's going to be no bodges. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be one or two, let's be honest. So after checking all the connections on the pipes to make sure we haven't broken anything and taken them off, we can actually put our attention to what looks like the worst bit of damage on the car. Now these actually look like the end of the chassis legs, but they are unboltable and they are just part of the bash bar, luckily. So there's four 10mm bolts holding these in and we can take them out. Now this is the main support for most of the front of the vehicle. This holds all the radiators, all the oil coolers, all the wiring, all the coolant lines, and it's all for all the bumper support as well. Now this is actually made of aluminium and it has a crack, so we're praying that this is the furthest the damage has gone because anything behind this would be structural. Nice. Okay, so this is what it's sitting like when most, most of the stuff is off the car. And this is where we can assess everything that we actually need to replace. And we're pretty sure we've actually got everything off which actually needs to replace. So everything we've took off already needs to definitely be replaced. Now there are a couple of coolant lines which have been pinched in the accident. But luckily they don't go too far back and they are easy access on the other side. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, right. an easy one. So I think what we've got to do is we've kind of just got to, what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to get the part numbers off the old part, sort of individually, or do you we try and find one that's been... Well, hopefully we can try and find one that's had damage at the back or side or something like that yeah um, i have no idea how much these parts are going to be yeah it's, it's obviously there's not many of these about is there so obviously we, we've not got anything here so we can't we might just start do a little bit more digging further back just to make sure that we do order everything correctly because um, we almost missed that coolant pipe so i think i'll do the hub i'll start doing this hub because you can see it's had a clean snap where the track rod goes now this is a good and bad thing about aluminium is that it breaks easy but there's always going to be like a weak point so if that was like a steel hub it might have done a so lot more damage that done steering mag but like i said you know you say it's probably done us a favor 
yeah, the fact that it's just weak because it's yeah, just it's cracked it's at the weakest point and yeah, gone. So it. although it looks bad, if the, on the, if this was like some older cars, it could have been lower arms, everything. So. Um, we're going to start taking this hub off and just make sure it is just the hub. Did we say earlier that we don't think the wheel has any damage? Is that what we said? Well, I can't remember what we said. I can't remember if we noticed this, but we're definitely noticing this right now. The wheel is actually bent. But I've got a man. You've got a man. Look at the size of these calipers. They are beautiful. I actually know a friend who actually put these calipers on a Audi S3 very recently, which was. Oh, is that a thing, is it? You can buy conversion brackets for those to fit on a lot of um, MQB platforms. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I'd never yeah. seen it before, and I was like, Tom, Tom, if you're watching this video, pretty cool. So we're going to start stripping the hub down because we actually need to see if there's any more damage, but also, we need to remove it anyway. Because that's a bit bolts to that, and then everything else bolts to it around it. Now that collar has got to come off as well. This has to come off. That collar. Is that part of the, oh no, right, blowtorch. Now because Ali is a lot weaker of material, when you have Ali hubs, they actually have steel inserts like this. And this should have stayed on the hub. So there's three things to use in this situation. First port of call, brute force. If that doesn't work, a blowtorch. And hopefully, uh, if that doesn't work, a grinder. Step one, brute force. Okay, step two. <laughs> <laughs> was that your attempt? Three hits and then that was it. Now we did try to be sensible in this car, so we used something called a, a proper tool. I'm not quite sure what they are, but it did the job. <laughs> and one Aston Martin trapper end. So we can return our attention to getting the hub off. So there's a 21 millimeter nut holding the bottom ball joint in and a 19 millimeter nut holding the top ball joint in. And then we go back to step one, brute force. <laughs> Let's do him, Chazza. <laughs> Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I don't know if it is actually. Yeah. Oh, well, it's more, more pretty a similar. Than Lempia, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! Oh no, not again. Oh, how the hell are we going to get this one off? So we use one of these little pulley contraptions. It should pull it right off. Bosh. So that's the hub off, and with the hub off we can actually check for some more damage as well. So, see if the ball joints are okay, see if they're split, and you can actually see if any of the arms have got cracks in or bent or whatever. Everything looks good, I think the only thing that's actually took that hit was that hub, and it's just completely snapped it off from where the track rod mounts. So, that there, we could potentially reuse the wheel bearing, because the wheel bearing feels okay and looks okay as well. But we'll see what we can get a hold of and see if it's even worth the stress, because sometimes it's not even worth the pain trying to get these wheel bearings out and unbolt them and press them in or whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's easier just to get the whole unit. So the last thing we need to take off before we actually start ordering some parts is this broken coolant pipe. So you can see here it's pinched. It comes all the way back. Annoyingly, if this wasn't an Aston Martin, There'd be a jubilee clip there, but unfortunately it's some kind of like bonded ring of steel. Um, you, you're not going to be able to get that off, so we've got to go a bit further back. We've got to follow it a little bit further back, and it goes straight into the expansion tank here. Luckily, there is a, uh, a clip holding it onto the expansion tank, so we don't have to buy the expansion tank and this. Nothing I hate more than connectors like this, which is a plastic connector pushed onto a plastic fitting using a metal clip. <laughs> There's nothing I hate more, because usually what happens is, after it gets hot and gets cold, and hot and gets cold, those two bits of plastic basically bond together, um, and they're a nightmare to get off if you've not got much room to pull. There is no room in there whatsoever, and usually as well, these clips ping off into a different dimension, and you never find them again. But luckily, this is a 2019 car, and it's low miles, so I'm hoping that this little connector will just pop off because if it doesn't, it's gonna be tough to get in that little space and give it some number one brute force. Okay. Oh, oh my God, it's come off well easy. Is this the life of working on new cars? Right, that's off, which I'm not even worried about it. And there's just two eight mil bolts, one over there and one here, holding the rest of this pipe off. 
Honestly, that is amazing. I've never had a car with those connectors which come off that easy. That is honestly amazing. And I'm literally pissing out coolant everywhere. Cool. Well, you supercar bloody mechanics don't know how easy you've got it. And there is the bent pipe. Well, that is what we think is everything that is damaged on the Aston Martin. So it's removed. We've got a bunch of parts that we need to order with a bunch of part numbers. So I'm not sure which way we're going to go about this. Now, obviously, we all know from watching some other YouTubers, sometimes you can actually cross reference part numbers and get them a lot cheaper. Um, we might do go away with that, but I think we're going to have a look first to see if we can just find another one that's been rear-ended or something just so we can get all the parts together because I've gone down the line before of trying to find part by part and it takes forever. We want to turn this around quick because I've just spent around six months doing one car. We want to start turning around some cars a lot quicker and not be in another situation like we did with the E30. So we're going to try and find one that's been fully wrote off and see if we can just get everything we need in one bolt. But for the time being, let's go and do some searching.